The uh, technical probe is a way of doing an assessment of your organization's current state of software engineering practice and using that as a yardstick for gauging how you're going to move from where you are now to where you want to be with uh, respect to your uh, product line ambitions. The uh, probe is yet another form of the series of guidance that we have for organizations that are um, taking up a product line approach. So the idea of the probe is that you want to look at your current state of organizational practice to determine what do I need to do to be successful with a product line approach? And the answer to that question is in the framework. There is guidance in the form of the 29 practice areas of the framework. And then how does my organization and my current situation rate against those practice areas? What is my state of practice with respect to architecture evaluation, for example? And is that good enough for evaluating a product line architecture? So you can make a determination of where you are now by doing this assessment by conducting an assessment of all of the parts of the organization that are likely to be part of the product line effort and then planning on the basis of the results from the assessment how you're going to achieve the end goal of becoming a uh, product line organization. So when we do this for an organization we use the framework questions as, or we use a set of questions based on the practice areas in the framework as the basis for assessing an organization and coming up with some recommendations for how an organization ought to proceed. And if you think of doing this sort of thing yourselves, this module will give you some idea of the kinds of questions you should ask and the kinds of things you should be looking out for when you do uh, an assessment of your current state of practice. And this is not like a formal CMMI or SCAMPI type assessment. It's an examination of the current state of practice. Uh, in the case of our implementation of it, we don't expect you to do any prep work for it other than making sure that people show up for the interviews. But you don't have to study the framework and learn the practice areas to come up with the kinds of responses you think the SEI is going to want to hear. It's really a risk mitigation exercise for you to figure out how are we doing right now and what are the strengths that we can build on and where are the areas where we need to improve some of our practices before we can take on product lines. Yes, Ronald. Don't you need the organization to prepare a briefing on the projects that they're doing? I, I, I'm thinking of like the risk assessment portion. No, no, we, we don't ask the organization to produce any briefing, but what we do ask is that in the preliminary phase of the probe, we, we do this in two stages. So we want to talk to the product line manager or designated product line manager and some of the business people and the architect about their goals for this and their overall ambitions for the organization with respect to product lines. But we don't request that they make a briefing. If they happen to have a briefing on hand, that would be nice, but it's not mandatory. So we have a question bank of about 500 different questions that we can ask based on the practice areas in the framework. And we use the preliminary phase meeting as a way of narrowing the focus. We never have to ask all 500 during a uh, probe, but we can use the preliminary phase meeting as a way of tailoring our approach in the second technical probe phase, as we call it. So <clears throat> the outcome of the probe is that, at least in our version of it, is that we present an organization with a, string, a set of strengths and a set of challenges. We don't use the politically incorrect term weaknesses. So we identify areas where you are strong, areas where there is room for some improvement before you can take on software product lines. And you as an organization can use that as the basis for coming up with an improvement plan. And if you do this kind of thing internally yourselves, that should be 
the ultimate goal, that it's to improve the practice of the organization. And so when you do something like this, you want to make sure that you get honest, candid answers from the people with respect to what they are actually doing right now, so that you can make a determination of what needs to improve. we were talking about where software is a component of the, uh, the product line. You would probably have to add some additional questions to bring in system considerations. So it would probably extend the interview period by maybe not quite a day, but maybe half a day, probably a minimum of half a day, because you'd want to talk to a couple of Mostly in our version of it for the software product lines, the interviews take place over the first two days of a week. If we can, we'd like to finish them in two days. In practice, for large organizations, there may be a third day of interviews. But we do like to keep the fourth day, which is typically a Thursday, free for us to prepare all these findings, because it's quite an effort to prepare findings in all 29 practice areas, which is why we really like the interviews to finish no later than about noon on the third day. So in a large organization that also wants to look at some of the system engineering aspects, we might have to go for an entire third day, in which case... Okay, well, that wouldn't be as bad then. Would there be a one meeting with all the stakeholders, or is it going to be a you know separate, separate... Separate groups, yeah, and I'll get to that oh. in a moment, yeah. So you can do this either when you're starting off a software product line effort or if you have a product line effort already underway. And a couple of our customers have already done this. We've actually done a reprobe on uh, two customers. And as I said, the whole idea is that this is a risk mitigation exercise for the organization to find out, you know, do we have a chance of succeeding in a software product line effort? Do we have the necessary expertise? Do we have the process discipline? So all of the questions are based on the practice areas of the framework. Do we have a good configuration management process in place? Do we have a disciplined approach to requirements engineering? Are we capable of creating a production plan for a product line organization? So the findings of where you are now can be used as the basis for identifying gaps and areas of expertise that need to be plugged for a full-up product line operation. The other thing a product line probe can do is get the buy-in of all the stakeholders because in the SEI approach, we like to present to everybody who's going to be involved in the product line and the product line probe a, an overview of what the product line probe is all about, what product lines are all about, and if possible, if we can get somebody from the organization, somebody at a high level, to talk about why the organization is moving towards product lines and why the participation of all the people in the audience is needed. So everybody who participates in the product line probe shows up at a kickoff meeting and then they split off into individual groups. We'll talk to the, the managers, we'll talk to the business people, the marketing people, the architects, the product developers, and so on over the course of the uh, three days of interviews. So we like to get a representative cross-section from across the organization. And this whole idea of conducting a probe had its roots in some earlier work being done by the SEI on risk evaluation and capability-based uh, assessments. But the overall content is firmly based on the um, product line practice framework. Here's an example of the kinds of people that we want to talk to. So any group or subgroup of these classes of people who are going to be involved in the product line effort we want to hear from them. We probably can't talk to everybody in a large organization, but we want at least a representative subset of developers, marketers, architects, business people, and so on, to give us an idea of the current state of both the technical and the business practices 
of the organization. Uh, our method takes place in two phases. The preliminary phase is a one-day on-site meeting with the product line manager or designated product line manager with the business people, with the product line architect. No more than about uh, half a dozen people or so. And then about a month later, and I don't think I've seen it occur any sooner than about a month later because <clears throat> it takes time to arrange the logistics for the main technical probe phase where we do the series of interviews. So we need to make sure that everybody is lined up for the interviews and people will be available at a particular location at a particular time. Uh, this gets tough in large distributed organizations and in some cases we've done probes with people phoning in from France, Germany and Singapore. Um, it's not ideal. We do like to have face-to-face -face interviews with people so that not only can you record the answers, but you can also watch the body language to see exactly how these answers are coming across. Oh, and I should say also that when we conduct the interviews, and if you do something like this internally, make sure that the manager and the managed are not in the same interview group. Because you do want candid, honest answers about the current state of your software engineering practice. Group interviews are permitted, they're not individual interviews necessarily. Oh, they're all typically group interviews. Only in very small organizations do we have one-on-one -on -one interviews. Or in some cases in large organizations where we have access to people at a high level, and we almost got the CEO in one organization, uh, we've had a couple of VPs who could only be present for half an hour, and so we will arrange just a half hour slot and ask a few key questions of that single person. But mostly we try for group interviews with no reporting relationships. Now, what's the difference between the one day on the preliminary and the quick look? One the day. quick look is a packaging of the preliminary phase where an organization is really not sure about whether or not they want product lines, so they don't want to commit to a full-blown product line pro. Okay. So they'll do a quick look, and then we'll make a determination whether or not it's actually worth doing okay. it. Thank further. So you can actually get a scorecard at the end of the uh, quick look that says, you know, yay or nay for now. Done. And, and you work through the usual scampy rules of non-attribution and all the other... Absolutely, yes. And there's a slide dealing with that. Yeah, we absolutely do not say in our briefing or in our written report who said what. We don't attribute it to individuals and we don't attribute it to specific groups. So at the end of the week of the uh, technical probe phase, it's four days on site for us with one day towards the end where we're off site collecting all the information and processing it and then making a final presentation on the last day. Uh, optionally, we can follow that up with a written report and some help in particular areas if the organization is interested in engaging us for that. In the preliminary phase, we will want to know things like, what's your organizational situation right now? Is this the first time you've ever tried to get into software product lines? Can you tell us something about your current level of process discipline, for example? What do you expect to do with the results of the product line technical probe? In fact, why are you even doing a product line technical probe? Uh, so this... Uh, probably takes, I think about six hours total is as long as I've seen uh, one of these meetings go. And we like to reserve the last half hour or so for arranging the logistics. Who's going to be the point of contact in either organization? What's the most logical facility to use for the interviews? And so on. So we cover topics like, in addition to the overall context, your Legacy context, what kinds of legacy artifacts or systems do you have right now that could become the basis of a product line effort? And are you planning to use those, or is it a totally uh, new effort for you? What's your current management and organizational structure, and do you have any plans to change that for a product line effort? And if so, can you show us a diagram of what the new organization is going to look like and tell us something about the expected roles and responsibilities. 
what kinds of implementation languages do you use, what kinds of development environments, and if there's any documentation that you can provide us now so that we can examine it in the month or so before the technical probe phase, that would be useful to us to enable us to narrow the focus of some of the questions if we find that we already have good documentation with respect to your CMMI assessments, for example, then we will short-circuit some of the process questions in favor of questions in other practice areas. So here's where we get into your question, Don. When we interview people, we make sure that there are no reporting relationships in the interview groups, and we do not report who said what or which group said what. And if you do this <coughs> internally, in some limited fashion, make sure you observe the same kinds of rules. And in fact, in one of the probes we conducted, we had a request from somebody in a business unit who was not a manager of any of the people involved in the interview, and in fact was not really part of the product line effort, but wanted to attend the interviews just to observe the process. We said no no external influence. However harmless he thought it was going to be, we do not want somebody in the room who isn't part of the process. So we're very strict about that. To one Pardon? Time. We had a request for a lawyer to attend one time. We didn't. For a lawyer to attend? <laughs> That's interesting. We haven't had that. We've had the alternative we've where... we the CEO. <laughs> we've had the alternative where we've been conducting a product line probe and one of the people had to leave the interview because he was an expert witness in a court case involving the organization. He did warn us ahead of time that that might happen. That was unusual, but we have not had uh, legal eagles present mm -hmm. at this. So we will ask a series of scripted questions based on the framework. Here's a larger list of the kinds of people that we would like to talk to. So typically, if we can, about no more than half a dozen or so people in an interview group. Sometimes it gets larger. I've seen groups as large as nine or ten people, which gets a bit unwieldy because in our version of the probe, the interviews are an hour and a half long. And we have lots of questions to ask, so it helps if you don't have... In my mind, half a dozen people or so is about a comfortable number. So we will conduct the interviews with all of the people who are expected to play a role in the product line. We will start consolidating our findings into a series of strengths and challenges with respect to each practice area. We will also try to generalize any observations that we have, for example, with respect to communication across the organization. You know, when we interview the management team and they say, everybody understands the direction we're going and they're all on board, and then the developers and testers tell us that we had no idea what a product line was until we attended the uh, kickoff briefing. So things like communication breakdowns or overall um, lack of discipline are the kinds of things that we can get as an addition to the direct findings from the interviews. Also, when we conduct the interviews, we like to ask the same questions of at least two different groups so that we get coverage. So if we are asking the architects about their architecture practices, we will also ask the component developers, what do you know about architecture and how does what's going on in the architecture group influence or not what you are doing? That will be a finding. Similarly, when we're talking to the business people, we may also get some information about the marketing prospects for the product line and vice versa. So we're able to get answers to practice areas other than the ones we are directly asking about if we have you know, more than a few people in an interview group. And as I say, we also like to ask the same questions of at least two different groups just for coverage. So at the end of the on-site product line probe phase, or the technical probe phase, we will report the results to everybody who participated in the probe. And at the discretion of the person sponsoring the probe, 
Those results can also be presented to additional guests. And in fact, in a couple of cases, the business unit manager who was the sponsor of the probe invited other business unit managers to hear the final results of the probe. And that's at the person's discretion. But if that person had requested that other business unit managers sit in on the interviews, we would have had to say no. So strict confidentiality. <clears throat> and at the end, we can also, about a month or so later, follow up with a written report on our findings that will be delivered to the designated point of contact. So if uh, Vivek is the point of contact for the probe and you're all members of the organization that underwent the probe and I know that you all are part of it, if I'm producing the final report, I don't give it to any one of you, I give it only to you and you're the one who disseminates it within the organization. Also, within the SEI, I've been part of several probes, but there are some that I was not part of. I don't get the results from those other probes. I may get to hear, in general terms, what went on, but I do not get the results of those probes. So we maintain strict confidentiality, and it's for that reason you hear me talk about an organization or our customer rather than uh, naming names. Yes. So the final report will contain a very brief summary of what the framework is, a very brief summary of what a product line technical probe is, and then some details about the organization and why they want to move into software product lines. This is based on information that we get from the people responsible for setting the goals for the uh, product line. And we will also talk about the probe in terms of the level of coverage of the practice areas that we've been able to get across the organization. And so far, at least in my experience, we've not had a case where a particular group will promise to show up for an interview and then not show up, because that would leave a gap in the coverage, and that would have to be noted in the report that for certain areas here, we simply don't have enough findings to be meaningful. That could be a finding unto itself, no, yeah, if they, <laughs> if they promise to show up and don't show up. Now, if it's sickness or travel delays, it's one thing, but if, it's, if they blow us off, then yeah, that is a finding. Uh, we will also summarize, if we can, some general observations about the organization and some overall strengths and challenges. And then for all of the 29 practice areas, we will report on what we have found. Um, if we are not entirely brain dead at the end of the week, we will also make some recommendations. But typically, we will leave the recommendations until the actual written report rather than trying to make recommendations on the fly at the end of the, uh, the interview sessions. We also use the product line practice patterns as a way of reporting our results, and I'll say more about that in the, um, the Adoption Factory module. Here's an example of the kinds of questions that we ask in an interview session. So if we're talking to a group about the organizational structure, and there is a product line already underway, then we will ask people to describe who has responsibility for architecture, component engineering, how are these responsibilities allocated and partitioned out across the organization. What we try to do in all cases is ask open-ended questions. We want people to tell us what the situation is now, or if you don't have a product line underway, how do you plan to change things to accommodate the needs of a product line? What we don't want is yes or no questions. Do you have a configuration management process? Yes. We don't want that. Tell us how you manage configurations. Tell us how you think that will support a product line effort. Tell us how you grapple with the concept of commonality and variability. Similarly, for requirements engineering, if you don't already have a product line underway, tell us how you plan, or if you plan, to change what you currently do 
in requirements engineering and how you distinguish between common and variant requirements. So open-ended questions in all cases. No preparation needed. Just tell us what the situation is now. We will make the determination of whether or not the current approach is suitable for use in a product line context. And for all of the practice areas in the framework, we have a series of questions like this. You can get an idea of the kinds of questions we ask in the book. The um, product line probe chapter has the questions that we ask of the, um, the product line management team or whoever is showing up at the um, preliminary phase meeting. There are variants of this that we have mentioned already, like the uh, product line quick look and the fact that one of our customers has their own variant of this called the product line potential analysis workshop, the uh, half-day workshop with people in different business units about the potential for product lines within that business unit. And there's also the related uh, BAPO or BAPO effort. I'm never quite sure how to pronounce this. But this is the one that was spearheaded by Frank van der Linden and his colleagues uh, connecting what you do in architecture with the um, business and organizational aspects of the uh, company. So it's another way of coming to grips with how do we get started in software product lines? How do we know whether or not we're even ready for software product lines? So you ought to think seriously about doing something like this, or if you feel the need to get the SEI involved to do a complete product line probe. But an alternative might be to do an internal mini probe. In fact, uh, that's what uh, the Cummins people did when they were looking at moving from the core one to the uh, core two product line. They did an assessment internally looking at their practice areas.